Greetings! Today, I have another very special thank you. And it's a repeat thank you. Dug it. Sincerely, thank you. Thank you for getting me a 16 and a half inch pizza stone to ensure that I can make my pizzas round and crispy. So, let's see what I've got in store for you, shall we? Greetings, and welcome to another episode of Cooking with Batman. Today, we are going to be making a pizza. Homemade pizza, the very basics, that thing that you keep on going out for. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do is actually preheat my oven 450 degrees. And I'm going to take this handy dandy pizza stone and I'm gonna put it on the top rack to preheat because if the pizza stone's not hot, it's gonna be bad. Okay, now for some basics. We're gonna start off by making our dough because the dough is one of the longer things it takes to make. Get your fresh yeast here, and uh, put in uh, a few teaspoons anyway. Uh, uh, three heaping teaspoons of yeast ought to do it. Oh, then let's get a, yeah, we're gonna, yeah, yeah, that's it. And three heaping teaspoons of sugar to go with that yeast. Mix this all together like this. Uh huh. That's good to go. We're gonna grab some water. And we are going to heat up the water. Now keep in mind that yeast is alive. Okay, let me explain this while the water is heating up. Uh, the yeast is alive and we are trying to give it a thriving condition. A thriving condition being a moist and sweet area. So we're also going to give it some heat, and if we make it too hot, then the yeast is going to simply die. So uh, while this is happening, I'm going to uh, start my pepperoni. And I mean just barely, barely start my pepperoni. Uh -huh. Pull off all this skin. You don't want to do that thing where you, where you eat it. Nobody wants to. Eat that skin. Yeah. That dinging sound means it's almost time to wash our hands. Now don't worry too much about the pepperoni because we're not, we're not digging right in there yet. I'm not too worried about contaminating my pepperoni. But the next step is something that will easily become contaminated if you have dirty hands. There we go. One. So, as always, turn the hot water. Get them wet, use some uh, industrial strength dish detergent, which is this regular pomegranate shit. Get set off your hands, one hand is washing the other, get between your fingers, that's where all the grime hides in. There we go. We can off our hands. Now, we're not going to accept the contents of this water as is. We're going to test it. We're going to test it, and you know what? I want more time. It's comfortable to the touch. It should be hot to the touch, but at a level where I can withstand it. Um, it it's very important that the yeast actually survives here. And then remains in a good place. Make sure a little junk pile while we're doing this. Over here. Seal up our yeasties, put them back in the fridge. They're living creatures. There we go. Now, here's my secret. If this is too hot, I'm going to pour it in here, and the coolness of the bowl will cool it down. If it's just right, I'm going to pour this in here. That is a little too hot. So, you're going to see me do my little secret. We're going to pour the hot water into the cold bowl. Mm, you like that? And then we're going to mix this. Uh, this should start to get frothy, if, assuming that I did not kill my yeasties. Ah, there's that smell. You can smell them. You can smell them. They're, uh, they're reproducing. 
The water has cooled down to a very nice temperature just from the uh, temperature of the bowl. So we're going to mix this around. Mix it around. Good. We can let that sit over here because we have other things to do. So next up, we're going to grab this bowl and we're going to put some flour in there. And remember, it's better to go with not enough flour than too much. This is going to be a fairly big batch, so I think I'm perfectly safe doing, uh, you know, about, about two cups of flour to start. Maybe two and a half. And, you know what, two and a little bit. There we go, we want about two and a quarter cups of flour to start with. Okay, and we're going to take some oil. We're going to go... Yeah, it's about a tablespoon, two, three, and that was probably close to three and a half. It was about four tablespoons, maybe five. Whatever I just put in there, just do that. You can't go wrong if you follow my instructions. I'm gonna mix this around, mix this around. Now, so it's nice if you have a time to let your yeast sit. We don't, okay? We're actually gonna let our yeast sit in the flour instead of in the bowl. So we're gonna... Mix this around. We're gonna pour our yeast right in here. Now you might notice that this is a proper mixing bowl, but you know what? Because it takes all the fun out of it, if you don't do this, we're gonna mix this by hand. And it's gonna be a lot of fun. We're gonna make sure that we have some more flour standing by. Eh, no, no. We're just gonna have some more flour standing by. So I'll just mix in the flour. See how dry this gets. Oh yeah, we can, we can do this by hand. Oh, this is so much fun, it feels so good. It just, it feels amazing. And I'll be taking it out of the bowl once I have the consistency proper. All right, we're gonna take our flour. Let's give it a layer. Just remember, dough is cheap, flour is cheap, everything involved in this process is cheap. You are better off making too much than not enough. In this case, I think I have just the right amount. So we're going to take our dough here, going to mash it around, and uh, we're going to do the uh, fold, fold, squish, fold and squish, fold and squish. We're going to do this. And you know what? At this point, I'm going to shut up because uh, we're just going to speed this up while I do this for a while. There! There we go. Now we're going to take this yeast, yeasty dough, we're going to put it back in here, and um, we're going to prevent any air from getting to it. Otherwise you get that scaly, grimy stuff, your dough rips apart. So uh, we're gonna utilize a couple of different methods here. One is going to be to oversaturate with oil. And there we go. Oil, we're just gonna paint it. Paint the whole thing in the oil. Keeps moisture from getting in. Just keep in mind that this is going to rise. This dough is going to grow. And uh, it's going to open up extra pores that things are going to get in. So lots of oil is advised. There we go. And next, we want to further prevent air from contaminating it. We're going to take this cloth here. Get it wet. There we go. Nice and wet. We're going to cover the dough, push it down a little. There we go. That'll keep the air from getting in. We're just going to set this aside. We're going to let it rise. This is actually going to take quite some time. So we're going to make the next step of the meal, and then we're just going to cut. And when we get back, it's going to be half an hour later. So the next part that we're going to do, 
we're gonna cut a pepperoni. Remember, the thinner, the better. Depending on your patience and uh, how sharp your knife is. Just keep on cutting them. We're not going to need all this pepperoni, so I will stop short of completing it. And uh, let's just talk about a few things then. Uh, this cutting board is actually going to serve a couple of different purposes. Uh, the the um, preheating of the pizza stone is to make sure that it gets heated from underneath as well. It makes it crispy. Um, I'm going to be using this cutting board as a means of taking the pizza stone out of the oven and placing it on the counter for me to transfer my uh, rounded out dough onto it without giving the, um, the pizza stone lots of time to cool off. And uh, we're just going to have all of our ingredients to go. We want everything ready to be placed onto the pizza right away. If we give the pizza stone uh, time to cool off, then it's not going to have the right effect, and you're going to have a bad pizza. All right. Don't cheap out on your pepperoni. Get the hard, dehydrated kind. Okay, if you get cheap pepperoni, it's really, really going to show. This is the star of your pizza. Unless you're one of those vegetarian people, whatever. I don't know what the star of your pizza is. Uh, maybe... Is it the dough? I don't know, enjoy your bread. Thing. Next. I'm done being bitter with vegetarians. Next, we are going to make some spices. This is going to be for our sauce. Uh, we're going to put in some thyme. Just keep in mind that we are making a very small amount of sauce. So you're not going to see the heavy saturation of ingredients that you normally see for me. Some rosemary. These are pretty, so use a little extra. If you're going to go extra on anything, go rosemary. Oregano. That's probably actually a little bit too much oregano too. Just, just if we're going to be perfectly fair. So if we cut down to the basil, even though I like to keep them even. Dehydrated parsley. No flavor. This is what makes your thing pretty. There we go, lots and lots of parsley, and it won't ruin the flavor. And we're gonna put just a dab, dab of garlic, because we have other plans for the garlic later on too, and you'll see how that comes into play. Uh, what we wanna do is we wanna extract the flavor from this. So, back over to the watering hole. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring this water to a boil. Then we're gonna crush it with a spoon, then we're going to bring it to a boil and crush it with a spoon. Doing that is going to get all the flavors out. The next part of our sauce is going to be just a can of tomato paste. Um, I am using plain tomato paste without any added spices or anything because I'm spicing my own tomato sauce. And it just makes sense to do it that way. So uh, I'm going to get to get going on this. I'll see you in about half an hour, and hopefully, if you didn't kill your yeasties, it'll have risen. Welcome back! So, let's take a look at our dough and find out what's going on in here. Wow! That is a lot of volume. Mmm, it's warm. It squishes right down. Yeah, yeah, that's... That is some... That's some good dough. Yes. Okay. So we're gonna get the dough out of there. Just gonna set it right there for a second. And I'm going to grab up my sauce water, my sauce water. So I've crushed down the uh, the herbs in here just a few times. So I got all the flavors in. Next step is going to be to add our tomato paste. There we go. And keep in mind that you can add your own spices to it. If you, uh, if you want, you can add some black pepper or whatever else it is that some people have. Um, I personally don't mind a little bit of Parmesan cheese in mine. But uh, I'm going to save that for something else, actually, as you're going to see.
It's gonna thicken up. We've got all the flavor out of those herbs and into the water. So as we thicken this up, we're not going to bite into any horrible flavor patches. We're going to have everything mixed around a little bit here. Remember, we're looking for a spreading consistency. This is good. I'm actually happy with it. If you're not happy with it, you can add a little bit more water. And if it's too runny, you can actually fix that by putting it back in the microwave for a little bit and, uh, and just steaming off some of the excess moisture. I am extremely happy with this consistency, so I'm going to put it aside. Uh, next, so there are multiple ways to work with your dough. Um, I do have a rolling pin here, and this is my fail safe. I'm hoping not to use it, but if I have to, I will. Uh, my goal here is to just take this dough and, uh, and stretch it. Just like that. We're going to go like this. And if we start to get any holes in the middle, then we're going to have to put it down. Let gravity do its work and do not rush this. Rushing this is bad. There we go. Now my pizza stone is 16 and a half inches. Um, I'm going to make it my goal to get this about 16 inches in diameter. Gives me just a little bit of leeway for the edges. How about the crust if I have to? Definitely getting there. Before I can proceed with that, I need to make something very important. Get some butter. Where's a spoon? I'm not gonna use that spoon. So you're gonna get some butter. And put it into a bowl. This isn't gonna take very long in the microwave either. I'm gonna get that into your bowl. There we go, it slides right off once you use your finger. You're going to apply some garlic. Now here's where you want your garlic to be a little heavier than it was before. Don't worry about getting garlic in the, uh, in the butter bowl. People like having that surprise. There we go, like this. We're going to melt it. Don't add your cheese to it until after it's melted. So that's melting, back over to this. Um, we're actually only going to be cooking the uh, pizza at 425. I thought that would be very important to tell you. The reason we set it to 450 was so that the pizza stone, as it cools after we take it out, doesn't lose too much of its temperature. I'm actually pretty happy with this. If I had a bigger surface, I could really get it going, but, uh, but that's good enough. I'm, I'm content with that. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna put some flour down on the counter. And the reason we're putting flour down on the counter is so that we can get our pizza off of this area here. Fix that little hole that I made. explain it because it's going to be, have to be fast. Take out the pizza stone, apply the sauce. Apply your cheese and apply your pepperoni. And apply your freshly made and hopefully properly melted, yep, properly melted, sauce to the crust. Alright, 
So, this is going to be a lot of hoo ha quick. What's up? Bam! Alright, got some smoke coming out of the oven. Go ahead, close that. Don't worry, it's just stinging my eyes. It's just stinging my eyes. Uh. Oh, it wants to. Hey you! Did I make this too big? Maybe. I'm gonna adjust it. It's cooking right down on my stone. And we're going to set this to 425. Now, here's where I said I didn't want it to come to this. Guess what? It just did. And that is okay. Yeah, not wanting to do something, but being prepared for it is better than not wanting to do something and just accepting it. Yeah. Now we're gonna hide all those imperfections under sauce. Precious, precious sauce. Now I like my side of the pizza saucy. So we're gonna put lots of sauce in. Some people don't like their so saucy. So we'll just put that there. Spread it around using the back of the spoon. And I'm not big on crust. So my sauce is going to extend pretty darn close to the edge. See that? Lots of sauce. Close to the edge. Okay, and now we're gonna start thinning out the sauce a little bit. Yeah, we're not gonna put very much. Just enough to tinge the dough a little bit. There we go. Next, I'm gonna take these, uh, this cheese that I already shredded, just give it a nice even mix all over the place. There we go. Go ahead, use lots. By using lots of cheese and toppings, you're actually defending the top of the pizza so that the bottom of the pizza has a time to cook. It's, it's quite ingenious, really. So there we go. This is, this is getting good. Go here, here. There's just a little bit of the spots where you can see the sauce left. Now we're gonna take our pepperonis and we're just gonna, gonna put them all over the place. These are good. And around and around it goes where it stops in the middle. When we're done making our swirl. Like I said, we had plenty of pepperoni. Yeah. We're going to swirl this around. We're going to paint what little bit of crust I have on my side with this butter and garlic sauce. And we're going to paint this thicker crust on the other side with the butter and garlic sauce. And then, we're going to take this cheese here. And look at that. A nice, light, sprinkly coating that is sticking to the crust. Now, everyone's oven is slightly different. I can't promise you that your oven is going to take the same amount of time as mine. 
but mine is going to take about 8 to 10 minutes to cook this. Because I have a thicker crust, I might even go as high as 11 minutes. So we're going to take this... Oh, did you melt to my cutting board somehow? You did. You... Yeah. Yeah. There we go. There we go. We're going to pick up this. We're going to slide it inside. Turn on the light. So what you're watching for, you are watching for the cheese to get really melty. Remember, it's on the top rack. So, when the cheese gets really melty and the crust starts to get golden brown, it's about done. Do not let it burn, because as soon as it starts to burn, you're not going to enjoy it. At the same time, if you did this fast, like I attempted to do, um, the interior of the pizza is not going to be raw. As you saw there, the pizza stone was actually cooking the pizza. I'll see you guys in another seven or eight minutes. Welcome back! It's been eight minutes and I don't have any time to spare, so uh, let's pop this thing out of the oven! Move out of the way. Fan it with your cape! It helps! Now we're gonna reach in. Gonna pull out that pizza. Oh yes! Baked to perfection with a layer of orange fat it can only possibly be coming from the mozzarella. Mmm, bon appetit. Dinner is served. Possibly even a snack for later and breakfast.